I'm out for a walk and I've spotted this beach. Oh, it's not really the sort of weather for togs, but this will be the perfect beach for exploration. I need to find a rock pool and some wildlife. What kind of wildlife, I wonder, will we find on this beach? And what lives in a rock pool? Crabs, starfish, sea enemies, starfish, quails, crabs, mussels, shells, crabs, fish, starfish, water, shells, sea horses, sea enemies, fish, crabs that have big nippers. You know, you guys could be right. There might be some seaweed in a rock pool and maybe some small animals, like small fishes. I think a dolphin would be miles too big to fit in a rock pool, but maybe some smaller animals might make a rock pool their home. There's only one way to find out, and that's exploration. Well, let's go. You've got to be pretty tough to live here at the high tide zone or on top of rocks that spend a lot of time out of water. Because in this part of town, those waves can give you a real hammering. This can be a pretty tough neighbourhood. To survive, you've got to be tough. You've got to be able to take a battering and to cope with being exposed to that drying air for long periods of time. So. Who are the tough guys, and how do they survive? A tough covering is a good start to survival here at the high tide mark. And that's just what periwinkles have. These are periwinkles here. They have a hard shell to protect them from predators. And you often find them tucked in crevices, away from tough waves. They slowly move over the rock surface, scraping off plants to eat. And they have a tiny lid in here that they close when they're removed from a rock. When it's very hot, they use slime to make airtight seals against the rock. These are the tough guys in this neighbourhood, periwinkles. Here we have a luxurious habitat where every home has its own pool. Well, every home is a pool. There's plenty of water here, even when the tide's right out. And there's lots of glamorous plant life. Oh. Well, in the intertidal world, this is the equivalent to a tree-lined street in one of the richer suburbs. So, let's have a closer look at some of the creatures that live here. Here's a typical rock pool. It's a real community. Here's the spot where everyone lives together in very close proximity. The kina, the periwinkle, the starfish, the sea anemone, and the odd camouflage little fish. Let's take a closer look at the sea anemone. It looks a bit like a plant, with a plant sort of name. It's actually a very simple animal. It's found in sheltered habitats, rock pools or crevices. See those tentacles? Look beautiful, don't they? Well, let me tell you, those tentacles are dangerous. Yes, dangerous. Look out all the other creatures in the rock pool. The tentacles have stinging cells which shoot a tiny bit of poison into the crustaceans and fish which brush against them. The poison will paralyze a fish. Then the sea anemone uses its tentacles to move its prey into its gut for a delicious meal. Mm -mm. Now for the starfish. Well, it's actually called a cushion star. It has five points, each lipped with suckers. And if the starfish loses an arm, no problem, it can easily grow another. Okay, spot the cockabully. 
Stop right there, Cockabully, because we want a good look. See the way it's camouflaged? Well, some Cockabullies can even change colour depending on where they're swimming. Oh, you can go now, but keep away from the tentacles of the sea anemone. Well, this rock clinger is a chitin. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight overlapping plates. It's a tough guy and would get battered twice a day by the waves. But boy, it can cling onto the rocks. It's a real sucker. In the next door pool live the crab family. These scuttling half crabs are really quite friendly neighbours, preferring to hide in crevices and under rocks. So if you're looking for some when you're at the beach, very carefully and quietly lift up a rock. That's how I found them, but they seem very eager to say goodbye to me. These tiny shellfish are mussels. And boy, do they love living together. In fact, you probably couldn't get much closer. They'll grow to be big mussels, sticking together all the time. Each tide brings breakfast in bed for these shellfish. They stay closed up when the tide is out and keep water inside and the sun out. Hey, when is a mussel generous? I'm afraid it's always shellfish. Stand by for the seashore code, explorers only. Take only pictures, leave only footprints, and kill nothing but time. Remember to handle creatures with care. Put back rocks and seaweed after you've checked them out. Danger, danger. Some creatures can be dangerous. Jellyfish and some sea anemone can give you a sting. And remember, treat crabs with care. A mad crab can give you a nasty nip. The tide thing. The safest way to deal with the tide in rock pools is to explore them when the tide is going way out. Keep safe. Keep safe by watching what the water is doing. Wear shoes that have a good grip. Slipping over on the rocks hurts. Ah! Well, those are just some of the inhabitants of the rocky shoreline. And it seems that the richer rock pools are the more popular places to live. But when you get beneath the glamour, there are plenty of sinister feeders there. Just think about that beautiful sea anemone. And all its poisonous tentacles. Strange but wonderful creatures. Each rock pool is a community. And the creatures in that community live together, depend on each other, and often prey on each other to live. So, although a rocky shoreline is not a great place to build a sandcastle, it is a very special place. If you've got a rocky beach near you, why don't you grab an adult and go down for an exploration? When you find some wonderful sea creatures, make sure you put them back. Kakite. This is a tough neighbourhood. You have to be strong enough to, dis to, 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 to enough to survive a real battering. Hey, Mum and Dad, thanks for paying your broadcasting fee.